Sadie's kindly agreed to be involved. We're going to examine her walk. And as you'll see, this is when she's off treatment compared to when she's on treatment. So when she's off treatment, uh, Sadie has Parkinson's disease. So the salient features will be evident when she walks towards us. So Sadie, in your own time, can you walk towards us? And as you can see, she's got quite a flexed posture, mild hypomemia, or expressionless face. And there's a reduction in the arm swing, particularly on the right, but on both sides, really. That's great. And if you could turn around and walk away from us again. The turns tend to take a number of steps, more than is usually required. And the stride length is quite low. She doesn't actually have a tremor at the moment, so she's partially treated. And then turn around again, a few extra steps to turn. And then come on back, thanks. And the reduction in arm swing is the key thing in early Parkinson's. That's great. Thanks. You can just stand there for a moment. Can you hold my hand? And there are no, no limitations elsewhere. So if you could rock up onto your toes. Fabulous. And down again. And onto your heels. I've got you. Great. OK. That's fine. And I'm just going to examine. You can put your feet apart a little so you don't feel too vulnerable. And you're looking for lead pipe rigidity at the elbow and cogwheel rigidity at the wrist. And Parkinson's, idiopathic Parkinson's, when it starts, is usually asymmetrical at onset. And in Sadie's case, it's more marked on the left-hand side. So I'm going to move your left-hand side, if you don't mind. So at times, it can be nice and free, looking for lead pipe and cogwheel. And then you perform, to exaggerate it, uh, the Kinnear-Wilson maneuver. So if you don't mind, Sadie, if you can just lift your hand up and down, gently now, while I do this. And I should be able to bring out a little bit more lead pipe, a bit stiffer at the elbow. And you can see that it's certainly much more stiff at the wrist, which is the cogwheel, which is supposed to be the lead pipe which in the elbow superimposed on the tremor that uh, Sadie sometimes has and sometimes does not. That's great. Thank you very much. Have you noticed any change in your voice uh, since you were diagnosed? Yeah, it's probably gone a bit slower. So that's hypophonia. So the pitch or the loudness of the voice goes down a bit. But swallowing is OK and everything, is um, it? Yes, um, provided I drink when I eat. I mean, I can't swallow anything very dry. And have you ever had any falls due to this? Any? Falls. Oh, no. Well, it's one of the important red flag signs when you're trying to distinguish between Parkinson's and Parkinson's plus syndromes. You ask about autonomic features such as bladder problems, bowel problems, uh, and swallowing problems, and also recurrent falls might be a red flag for Parkinson's plus syndromes such as multi-system atrophy, progressive supranuclear palsy, um, cortical basal degeneration, etc. But uh, when you take um, Cinemet, isn't it, which is a mixture of L-DOPA and a peripheral decarboxylase inhibitor called Carbidopa, when you take that, how long does it take to work, in your view? The, well, it's Salevo, you mean? Salevo, sorry, Salevo, which yeah. is adding in entacapone. Yeah, um, maybe after 10, 15 minutes. OK, yeah. and after 10 minutes, it starts to work, and you feel what? Well, I'd feel myself getting freer. Freer. Yes, and the, the, the symptoms would, you know, the feelings, the numbness and the tingly feelings would just... Yes. You know, it's describe. actually described as numbness and tingly, but in fact it's an inner sense of trembling, isn't yes, it? Yes, um, um, yeah, very much so, even in... in even in though you can't see it? Yeah. Okay. And then it works for how long before it starts to fade off again? Three to four hours. Three to four hours. And will you know it's wa wearing off? Oh, yes, yeah. And so the point is, when you're taking history from someone with Parkinson's or Parkinsonism, is you want to know what time they take their first tablet, how long, it works for, how long it takes to work, how long it works for, and when it wears off, and then when they take the next one, of course. And then the other crucial thing is, do you or do you not get, when you're taking the medication, abnormal movements where you, get, um, yeah. you don't get any? So that's, they're called dyskinesia, when someone is getting too much L-DOPA or they're having a reaction to L-DOPA. So you can get uh, dyskinesia at the top of the dose, peak dose dyskinesia, or at the end of the dose, wearing off. And you need to know where in the cycle, if you like, of on-offism in Parkinson's, where the dyskinesias come in, because that's then where you uh, pharmacologically um, act, so to speak, to try and alleviate symptoms. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. That's great. Thanks.